Hello, my name is Zhou Hao. I'm a young filmmaker from China. I'm here to present my film, uh, The Night. Uh, it is in the uh, Panorama 40 program uh, in this year's uh, Berlinale. Uh, I hope you can come and uh, watch and enjoy my film.你到底要干什么？和你一样，做生意。和我一样做生意。对。哎，你，新来的，多少钱？哦，他他不卖，他是我的朋友，来这里看我的，写生意朋友。我做什么？和你没有关系。好啊，没关系，对我们没关系。那
In fact, in my college, I I don't think my college is really was very helpful for my filmmaking, you know, study. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I my real education is the city. Okay. Yeah, yeah. because uh, my campus is located in a big city called Chongqing. All right. And uh, I always went to downtown to you know uh, explore the city to meet people. Right. And uh, then I I met some uh, how do you say sex workers back uh, in, in downtown, and they are like my age. And okay. That also inspired me to write the story. I see. So there was kind of a real life inspiration yeah, to yes, it. Yes, yes. I see. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting that you say that because you use handheld cameras mm -hmm. uh, throughout the movie, which sort of gives this documentary-like feeling um, to the movie. So actually, I was wondering how much the film depicts the real-life conditions of, of young sex workers uh, in, um, in China. Uh, OK, so there were some sex workers like uh, doing business in the street, uh, even back then and nowadays. Yeah. Uh, but most of them are female prostitutes. Yeah. Uh, you know, female sex workers. Right. Uh, the male ones, um, they they are more like they they were using internet even back in uh, right. 2014. Yeah. 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 Um, but. Uh, but the female ones are real, so mm. um, I think I can also put the male sex workers in the street. Yeah, it's more uh, visually more interesting because okay. if I'm using, if it's like hundred percent true, and then use internet to do that, that would be a little bit because uh, I want to use the, those locations. Yeah, for, yeah, as yeah, you said, that was the starting yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean those locations are indeed very atmospheric and. Um, Especially the alley where where they spend most of their time, I thought it was a an interesting choice because all these characters are somehow um, chasing a certain kind of intimacy that they struggle to find, and in this alley, spatially speaking, they are almost forced to kind of get in touch on even on a on a literal sense if you want to pass you have to you have to get in touch with those who wait in in that alley um, so I was I was just curious about if there was some sort of a metaphor behind that or something that was leading to this desperate seek for intimacy um, the film. oh yes uh, I intentionally to choose those in uh, locations because they are quite uh, close yeah it's like uh, they are trapped in uh, in that alley because the walls are really tall yeah. and uh, also the tunnel is like uh, you know they're trapped in this those those different uh, spots and uh, I would say that's a metaphor for the um, minority groups in China. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they just trapped in their uh, dark, yeah. dark corners, and then, they, uh, and then of course they use those uh, trapped places to uh, to start relationship, to start some sort of intimacy uh, in those like uh, really, really um, close places. Yeah, uh, it's. Interesting that you say that there is some sort of a darkness, because if I remember co uh, correctly, then the whole movie takes place in the night, and I mean that's the title as well. Yeah. Um, so it really seems like that these three main characters, they are kind of creatures of the night, or they really belong to that world. Um, do you want to speak a bit about what? Does this mean to you? What What does the night, as as a concept, mean to you and um, to this film? Yes, because um, I mean, still Chinese uh, society is quite a uh, close society. Even even though the economy is like booming and uh, uh, the market is really open to the world, but I think the uh, 
the structure of the society is still quite close, especially for those um, uh, LGBT group or for uh, sex workers or, or for uh, drug addicts. Uh, you also you won't see those uh, figures on big screen or on TV or, or on news and. Uh, Yes, of course you would say, but then it's about like bad news about them. like you know. Uh, it's a bit stereotypical. Yeah, stereotypical. Yeah, like uh, basically to inhumanize them. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's what they are back then and even nowadays. So they are yeah. kind of like you know the people that kept in the shadow in the night. Yeah, so that's what I want to. Uh, mm. So was this also a motivation for you to oh, yes. to finally put this out on the big screen and, yes. and provide yes. some representation to these yes. groups? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Another interesting thing that I I was really fascinated by is the many many mirror shots in the movie. We see the characters through mirrors very often. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I got the sense that it sort of complicates their relationship to each other, but also it sort of projects their inner turmoil and the inner uh, personal developments that they go through uh, in this narrative. So can you talk a bit about these shots and, and why you wanted to use mirrors so frequently? Oh, yes. Um... Another inspiration of this thing uh, was coming from um, the Greek myth, uh, narcissism. Right. You know, narcissist. Yeah. Um, and uh, the main character it has that uh, characteristic. Characteristic. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Yes. Uh, it's not like that kind of uh, narcissism. Narcissistic char character isn't like. A, isn't like like modern ways like uh, what is cool like Donald Trump not like mm -hmm. that you yeah. know uh, it's more like classic uh, classic like literature way yeah like uh, the, the 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 characters just enough of themselves and then they uh, they use they they create a shell to protect themselves yeah. Uh, and then it's hard for them to, to how do you say, to show, share their emotion, to uh, start a relationship with other yeah. people. And uh, that's, that's why I, I decided to use Miro. Mm -hmm. uh, because in that Greek myth, uh, it's, uh, I think it's a pond. Yeah, it character is, yeah. Look, you know, look it's at, through the water. Yeah. Through the water. Yeah. So that's the, uh, that's the inspiration. Because Miro yeah. is a great way, I think, to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But then my question would be because, yeah, indeed, there is a quite a clear reference to, mm -hmm. to this myth. Uh, but then, it isn't the main character who takes up on the name of, oh, yes. of Narcissus, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so it's very interesting, uh, because I was wondering about, because indeed, he is the one who, who is the closest to that figure from the ancient mm -hmm. Greek myth, mm -hmm. but then it's actually the female character who gets this name mm -hmm. in the movie. Uh, yes, I was like trying to create some sort of a mural through that female yeah. character to yeah. the uh, main character. Exactly, because yeah. I, I got kind of this feeling, especially towards the end of the movie, that as if they are actually like one and the same, like the, the like as if they are the two characters together would give up a full personality in a oh, way. Oh yes, yes. They yeah. are like a one to each other. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, definitely. Very interesting. Yeah. And what about the other two names? Because all the characters are named after flowers. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, we have a clear reference to this Greek myth of Narcissus. But then I was curious about the other two names as well. Like, do they um, refer to something? Yes, because uh, traditionally in China, uh, well, the pimp will give uh, like especially female uh, sex workers, prostitutes, flower yeah. name oh, as okay. their uh, how do you say that as their um, 
nickname yeah. to the customer. Yeah, so like as a sport, it's working persona. Yes, working yeah. persona. Yeah. 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 yeah, traditionally they will give you yeah. the flower name. Okay. Now, yeah, that's the idea coming from. Oh, I see. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, uh, at some point, um, one of the characters in the movie says, anything with a begin comes to an end. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I thought that it's it's quite a profound way of positioning these characters in this in this world, and it for me it suggested some sort of hopelessness, but at the same time also some sort of relief mm -hmm. that well everything that begins will come to an end as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Do you do you have some attachment to this philosophy or was it something that you that you really wanted to put into this narrative? Oh yes, um, I think on the one hand uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a description for those uh, uh, my, my, my nice people, right. like they, uh, they have a sad ending, mm. that kind of thing. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's a good wish for them because after the end, they can start a new, or I yeah. wish they can start a new kind of life or a new kind of. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I see. Um, let's talk a bit about the soundtrack of the film. Uh, it seemed like as if each and every character has their own theme song in a way, or there is like a song attached to them which sort of gave them a new dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, so why was this very important to you and how did you come to these particular choices that you made in the movie? Uh, yes, uh, uh, first I really love those songs. Okay. I love the rhythm, they, uh, yeah. they are really like classic. Uh, and uh, they're all from like 70s, 80s, very, very fam famous Chinese singer. Yeah. And then uh, all those sounds are sort of related to uh, the, the character's name, like Tavros or Rose or Narcissus. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a relation to their characters. Uh, but I think the most important is that um, the rhythm of those sounds can uh, really give the image a, a, a special feeling that uh, uh, you, you can you can feel like I at least I was feeling like those tones are pretty for them yeah. or for those uh, visuals. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I, I feel like uh, I should yeah, no. choose those songs. Yeah, no, it, it absolutely it, it makes sense. It, it really gives some sort of texture yeah. to the image, or, or at least that was my impression as well. Um, you are also playing the main role yeah, in yes. the movie, and then you were also the director behind mm -hmm. uh, this project. Can you tell us about a bit about this experience of of being an actor and a director at the same time? Uh, it was hard. Uh, yeah. I won't suggest <laughs> any director or actor doing that because, uh, yeah, the difficult part is that uh, first you need to uh, act and then to be sucked in that emotion mm. as an yeah. actor, actress, yeah. as that uh, character. Yeah. But then after, uh, like, after that shot stopped, then you need to go back and then check the camera and then to see like, oh, if you are acting well, and then you need to, how do you say, jump out of that, of the car, role. yeah, of yeah. that role, and then to view your what, what yeah. does your performance look like. Mm. I think that's really uh, that's really difficult, but uh, but I really enjoy that uh, experience uh, as well because I can. Uh, I wrote the script, so right. I knew the character very well, yeah. and I, I, I hope I deliver the right uh, or the best emotion of those characters. Um, I, I, I probably won't do that again because it was so difficult, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's also like 
Yeah. yeah, like now I prefer to focus on only one uh, position. Position. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I see. Um, you mentioned in the beginning that the city worked as an inspiration for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have chosen indeed very particular places within the city. We very often visit public uh, toilets in the movie and uh, these very urban landscapes with a lot of uh, concrete. Um, what was it exactly that, that joined you to this and what, what did it add to this inner turmoil of the characters uh, in the film? Um, so, uh, I mean, all those locations are not, are not like really downtown, downtown yeah. place, as you probably can tell. It's like a dingy little mm -hmm. town yeah. kind of feeling. And uh, I, I think I also intentionally to choose those locations that's kind of uh, have a sort of a distance from the downtown high yeah. uh, because that's where those people uh, live or they belong. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I think those uh, dingy places or uh, how do you say those those, those um, places can give the characters a, a true life? I, I, I mm. think. Yeah. 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 Because it's more real. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there was one thing in the film that uh, kept coming back. It was sort of a recurring um, symbol, maybe. And uh, I didn't really know what to make out of it. It was the ice cream okay. in the movie. Mm -hmm. We've see, we see it a lot of times, the characters are eating ice cream. This is how the movie ends as well, mm -hmm. uh, with, with indulging uh, in that and, and having the joy of it. And it's always melting, it's super warm. Um, and I was wondering what's, what's behind that and, what, and how, that, how that comes and, and motivates the story. Um, yes, because uh, ice cream is difficult to keep. You need to finish it in a short yeah. time, otherwise it will melt. Just yeah. like uh, it happened multiple times in the film, uh, the characters holding it and then they start to melting. Um, that's sort of the uh, emotion for those three characters be in between them. Uh, no, mar no matter how intimacy, how intimate they are, or how strong the relationship, or how how do they feel each other? Their their uh, emotions are always like uh, how do you say melting or mm. changing? Okay. Yeah, it's a changing form. Yeah. Just like the ice cream. I see. Yeah. Okay, that's in interesting. Um, there is there is this very strong drive for intimacy with these characters. And at the end of the movie, we still leave them, I would say, in a, in a somewhat uncertain place. Um, what do you think, what happens to these characters after the film ends? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever went further with, okay, what could happen with these um, characters? Yes, um, yeah, I have thought of that. I, I, I think my thought is that uh, all of them will change after what happened to them. Yeah. Like uh, the main character, uh, uh, which is me, I mean, in the film, yeah. will uh, change his job, will start to uh, start a new life, or, you know, find a yeah. different job. And also, uh, I think I also indicate that the, um, the girl in this film, yeah. will uh, start a new life too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also for that uh, another man in the film, uh, because he wasn't a sex worker, but then right. he uh, started to experience in that. Yeah. And then after that, he probably won't continue as a sex worker. 
either. So, uh, yeah, they, so the gen general thought for their afterlife is that yeah. I hope all of them change. Yeah. And do you yeah. think will, will their paths cross again? Sorry? Will they meet again? Is their uh, story... Yes, yeah, yes. I, I, I think so. Yeah. I think they will meet each other. Yeah. That gives some sort of comfort, yeah, that, that, that would be nice. Um, so there are two dominant marginalized groups that you deal with in the movie, sex workers and the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the film, it sort of intersects as well. Um, so I'm wondering, what is it that you that you really wanted to tell about these about these groups with this movie? What is it that you that you would have liked if the audiences take away watching your movie? Um, so it's again, it's really hard to find or to see uh, humanized characters in Chinese cinema as a. LGBT groups mm. or sex workers uh, from mainstream uh, platform at least yeah. or cinema. Um, yes, that's, that's what I was trying to do to uh, give them some voice to let people say them uh, from the from the darkness, from the night. You know, even though they live in the night, but uh, they, they still deserve to be. Uh, yeah thing, you know, uh, from the so-called mainstream uh, people or the uh, mainstream, um, I don't know, audience, I think. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thank you so much for, for the interview. It's really great to have the movie back, uh, especially for this great occasion, like the Panorama 40. And I wish you all the best for the rest of the festival. And uh, yeah, I hope that we will see each other soon again. Yeah, thank you for your interview. Thank you.